So I don't know if you guys remember, but a couple months ago, I built a, an editing system to replace Prometheus temporarily because he's still out of order until I can get a new graphics card, preferably an RTX 3000 series GPU to replace the dead RTX 2080 Ti that's in there currently. So in the meantime, you know, a couple months ago, I built that system only to find out that the motherboard didn't work. It's still not turning on! The board's getting power, it's just not turning on for some reason, and I think it might be the motherboard. I waited on MSI to send me a new board, which was their other uh, TRX40 creator, or I guess creator TRX40, either way. But uh, this is the original board that I used in that build that did not work, it is still not working. I think it's just dead, I have no idea why. I think I probably bricked it at some point and just forgot how I did it. Uh, the point is, is that they sent a replacement board, which is which is great. We're, we're gonna uh, actually do a test boot this time around, unlike, unlike last time, to make sure that that board's working. Um, but uh, this is sort of the, the setup that we had. We have a Ryzen, Ryzen Threadripper 3960X. That's a 24 core, 48 thread CPU. Obviously not quite as powerful as the 3970X that's in Prometheus over there, which is a 32 core, 64 thread CPU. He's a big boy, um, but obviously 24 cores is much more than, than what you could get on mainstream Ryzen. So uh, thread for third gen is the way to go for an editing system like this. Bear in mind, like I, I have an editor, he's fantastic, but uh, I do still edit some of my own videos, uh, especially for the Workhorse channel, uh, vlogs and stuff like that. I know I haven't posted a vlog in forever, but when I do, uh, I'm usually editing those. So we've got 3960X right here. We also have 64 gigs of Thermaltake DDR4. I'm actually gonna be swapping this out for, for Crucial Sticks. So over here, we actually have two 32 gig kits of a DDR4 3600. So that's gonna give us the same capacity, 64 gigs, but because there's twice as much capacity per module, we'll only be using up uh, half of the DIMM slots available, which means that we can still easily upgrade to 128 gigs down the line when I need it, which is not gonna be for a very long time. And then we're also going to keep the uh, the original AIO, which is a Fractal Celsius Plus S36, but I'm gonna be swapping out the original fans for some uh, NF-F12s from Noctua, Chromax, of course. And while I'm at it, I'm also gonna be giving this system a ridiculously insane upgrade in the storage department. So thanks to the team at Crucial, they actually sent over these P5 Plus drives. These are PCIe Gen 4 NVMe M.2 drives. We have six two terabyte drives and one one terabyte drive, giving us a total of 13 terabytes of storage in this system, of NVMe storage, no less, PCIe Gen 4. So uh, let me kind of explain to you how this is all gonna work. Right now, I've already got this guy somewhat, somewhat like half installed. This is the, uh, the the single one terabyte drive. This is gonna be our boot drive that we're gonna be loading Windows 10 onto. And then I also pre-installed two of the two terabyte drives right here under this heat sink. Uh, this one's gonna be, well, it doesn't really matter. One of them is gonna be for, for games, because, you know, I just need to be able to play games and install games on, on pretty much any system that I build these days. And then the other one's actually gonna be just sort of like a general purpose, general use drive for media, storage, personal files, documents, things like that, whatever needs to go on, uh, whatever, you know, I don't want on the C drive, I can just dump on here. Oh, it's also gonna be used as a cache drive, because generally when you're editing, you want your workflow scattered across multiple drives as much as possible. So we're gonna have Adobe Premiere Pro probably installed on the C drive, and then a cache drive separate from that. And then we're gonna have a separate scratch drive as well, which is where the other two terabyte drives come in. We're gonna have four two terabyte drives installed into this M.2 expander, MSI's Aero uh, expansion card. It's a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe M.2 expansion card, and it's got four PCIe Gen 4 NVMe M.2 slots on it. You can see right there. This actually came included with the uh, the motherboard, so kind of nifty there. I actually have the uh, the Asus M.2 Hyper expansion card as well, but I decided to use this. It's black on black and stuff. It's pretty, pretty much the exact same thing. So we're gonna have an eight terabyte scratch disk uh, at our disposal, and I'm actually gonna set this up in a RAID 10 array. RAID 10 is basically uh, RAID 1 plus RAID 0. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're, you're able to stripe the drives and get ridiculous speeds, practically almost double and then you also have the the added benefit of redundancy so if one of the drives fails uh, we don't lose any data that's actually going to cut our, our working capacity down to four terabytes only four terabytes this is going to be seriously like one of the best storage configurations i've ever used so i'm pretty excited we'll do some testing on it as well to see what kind of ridiculous speeds this thing puts out now obviously it's no surprise that i'm using crucial ram and ssds uh, for a crucial sponsored video but honestly i've been using their products since the very first build i ever put together over a decade ago i still remember like it was yesterday it was a crucial m4 for 64 gig drive because back then SSDs were so expensive that was the highest capacity I could afford at the time and I had my OS loaded up onto there I just remember the boot times were ridiculous I, my mind was blown and as soon as I had enough money I bought another 64 gig uh, M4 and then striped those in RAID 0 still had my OS on it which I later learned was a terrible idea fortunately nothing bad ever came of it but obviously I've been using their products for a really long time they've never let me down over the years and the fact that I'm using them for a build where performance and reliability are of utmost importance uh, definitely speaks volumes to, to my confidence.
confidence in them. We've got an RTX 3090 Supreme from MSI. Now, obviously it's good to have fast RAM, lots of capacity and, and good SSDs for an editing station, but RAM and SSDs, the storage doesn't really affect uh, rendering speeds too much. That's the, the bulk of that workload is generally left to the CPU and GPU. And honestly, there's few cards on the market right now that'll outdo this puppy. We've also got, uh, we also need uh, enough power to, to drive this whole system. This is a is gonna be a very power hungry system with 24 cores and an RTX 3090. I do have this uh, Fantex Revolt X 1200 watt unit. This is actually the same unit that I, I tried to use with uh, initially with, um, with the Aqua build, the wall mounted PC. And it was just, it wasn't working right. Uh, uh. Wait, hold on. We're obviously getting power to the system because the LEDs are all turned on. Let me try surface mounted power. That does nothing. Uh oh. And I think it's some incompatibility, some weird niche incompatibility with the motherboard itself. We'll test it out. I do have a backup power supply in case this one doesn't work uh, with this build either. I think it will though. I think it was just a weird thing with the ASRock board. We'll see. 1200 watts though, should be plenty. And then finally, we've got our case. Fractal Design Meshify 2. I was actually looking around. I was like, I don't have a good case for this build. I have the, the Fantex 719, which is just way too big. It's just overkill and that's like meant for a custom loop and stuff. But I found this guy. It's got good airflow. Um, the, the front panel is all mesh as the name suggests. And I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm actually gonna remove the um, the dust filter. I'm gonna remove the dust filter to, just to get more airflow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean the system a bit more often, but I don't really mind that, and I, I'd much rather have the better thermals. So we'll do some thermal testing briefly at the end of the video as well. Those are all the parts. It's gonna be an absolutely beast of a system. If you want links to any of this stuff, I'll put them in the description as always, but without further ado, let's go. So I've got some updates for you guys. I've got some serious updates. There's a lot going on here. Lots to, lot to get you guys up to speed with. So for starters, here's the build. Here's a look at the final build. It looks pretty. Uh, you can see I, I did end up swapping out the cables for extensions because I just couldn't help myself, but these ones don't match. One of them doesn't match because uh, the cable kits these days only come with two eight pin or two six pin cables for your GPU. And uh, this, this GPU has three eight pin plugs. So I'll have to fix that later. That's a, a quick swap. The other thing you might've noticed is that I switched back to the MSI Aero expand Z M.2 card after all. The reason being is that uh, I realized you actually need to slot this card, this expansion card into a particular slot, the slot that's actually wired up for uh, 16, 16 lanes. Whereas the bottom slot, the very bottom slot is only wired up for eight. Because it needs to go in this slot, this is actually the better card compared to the Hyper M.2 card because this is so long, it's so much longer than, uh, than the arrow that would actually choke the fans on the RTX 3090 significantly more because it goes goes way out and covers almost all three of the fans. Whereas this one is like maybe one and a half fans covered. Still not ideal, still not great. I guess what I could do, mount this vertically because we do have a vertical, oh no, we can't because there'd be a clearance issue with the RTX 3090 because it's also very uh, tall. I'll, I'll figure something out, but this is where things get not so great. I'm having an issue with rating the four drives that are in this car. I've spent five, six, maybe seven hours trying to get this freaking raid configured and it's just not taking. Obviously I'm trying to do it within the MSI BIOS and I keep reading online that uh, AMD Ryzen's RAID setup is just a really broken system. It's just super unstable and I'm really starting to, to see that now. It's a really long story, I won't get too into it, but every time I try to install the RAID drivers, Windows installation crashes, or if I try to even change the RAID settings 
uh, the rate array settings within the BIOS, that crashes too. Like it'll just crash within the UEFI and, and it's just, I'm not getting anywhere with it. And I even reached out to MSI directly. They walked me through several troubleshooting steps. They were really nice and, and actually very helpful or tried to be helpful, but nothing worked. And so they actually concluded that the RAID controller on the board is probably not working. And in fact, when they did send me this, I did notice that it wasn't a brand new board. It was slightly used and I guess they didn't have time to properly test it which I just, oh. so this is the second second creator TRX40 that is just not working out for me. We'll have to do an updated video or follow-up video where we actually get the RAID, uh, the RAID 10 configured properly or just at all. In the meantime, I have to find a workaround, which is uh, not ideal. It's definitely not ideal, but it is something and that's using Windows storage spaces. I know everyone's gonna be like, use Unraid, use Unraid. I've never used Unraid before. I'm not familiar with it, but I just looked up some tutorials on it and it looks way more in depth and way more complicated than what I have time to ded dedicate to right now. So in the meantime, uh, we're just gonna be using Windows storage spaces and the reason why this is kind of limiting is because it only really supports a couple different RAID configurations. So there's two-way. Uh, simple is just if you have a single drive, but two-way mirror is basically RAID 1. It's essentially the same as RAID 1. I don't know why they don't just call it RAID 1, but this is uh, basically creates a mirror, which obviously would give us redundancy and cut our capacity in half, but not really much of a performance benefit. Then there's three-way uh, three mirror. This actually makes three copies of your data so that any two drives can fail, but you actually need uh, a minimum of five drives to make that work, which we do not. We only have four. And then there's parity, which is essentially RAID 5 from what I understand, because it creates parity bits across all your drives so that if any of them are to fail, then the parity bits on the other drives can help recreate that lost drive. This also gives you a performance benefit with your read speeds, but unfortunately, I think it tanks your write speeds because since the parity bits are spread across multiple drives, there's a lot of data bouncing back and forth and that creates a slowdown, um, which uh, is gonna affect your write speeds quite a bit. And with video editing, you obviously want your write speeds to be really good, just like your read speeds. They're both really important to the editing process. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna do some testing. I wanna see the performance of a two-way mirror versus a parity setup. So RAID 1 versus RAID 5. We'll just kind of compare the two speeds, see what we get. Obviously, either one's just gonna be a temporary solution until I can actually get RAID 10 working somehow. And then we'll actually jump into an Adobe Premiere Pro rendering test to see just how fast this thing can actually export uh, some 4K video. All right, the results are in. So let's take a quick look at the performance of our two-way mirror uh, setup, which is essentially a RAID 1 array. You can see here in Crystal Disk Mark that uh, we actually got sequential reads of around 7,000 gigabytes a second, which is actually slightly above. It's roughly 300 megabytes a second faster than what's advertised on the box. And sequential writes were just shy of 5,000 megabytes per second, which again is right on target with what the drive's advertised to run at. Uh, and then you can see here some of the other sequential and random reads and writes there. When it comes to video editing, both sequential and random speeds are important uh, because when you're scrubbing along the timeline, you know, you're skipping around from A to Q to C to G, and that's obviously where the random performance comes in. But if you're just clicking somewhere on the timeline and clicking play, that's obviously a sequential order of events. So really you need both in order to have an optimal editing workflow. Uh, and these speeds are actually really good. Let, let's actually compare uh, what we saw with the RAID 5 array, or as Windows Storage Spaces calls it, Parity. Uh, also, something to note is that uh, you actually get a bit more um, storage out of a, a Parity or a RAID 5 array than you would an equivalent two-way mirror setup. Um, just because the, uh, the storage efficiency is a bit better since you're using Parity across multiple drives instead of a straight mirror, uh, so whereas we have four terabytes roughly usable on the RAID 2, or I'm sorry, on the RAID 1 array, we've got uh, just under five terabytes on our RAID 5. And these are the speeds that we're getting on that. You can see our sequential reads have jumped up significantly. We're getting over 13 and a half gigs a second. Our sequential reads at QDepth 1 and our random reads are pretty much on par with what we saw in the RAID 1 array. But as you can see with the RAID 5 array, our write speeds have taken quite the tumble, going down to 1334 megabytes per second on our sequential reads, which uh, I'm more disappointed that we didn't get 1337 than, than anything else. So you can really see where the trade-offs are here and the pros and cons of each RAID array. That's exactly why I wanted to do a RAID 10 setup because we could have our, our, our cake and eat it too, essentially, by getting blistering fast sequential reads and sequential write speeds. Um, if, uh, if this was RAID 10, we'd probably see our write speeds be pretty close to what, what the reads are showing right here on the RAID 5 setup. So again, stay tuned for the follow-up video where I actually get RAID 10 working once and for all. Uh, and I'm definitely hell-bent on doing that because again, this is my personal system. I want it to be uh, running at the best performance possible. For now, why don't we go ahead and switch to Adobe Premiere Pro and do a little quick render test. 
All right, we just did the rendering test and it was with a 4K clip, it was 10 minutes long. I had some effects on there like color correcting and things like that. Uh, 35 megabits per second was the bit rate that I used and we rendered it out in just two minutes and 35 seconds, which is blazing fast. That's absolutely insane considering the resolution and duration of the clip. Uh, so I'm really happy with that. The temperatures, however, are just okay. Uh, I got 69C on the RTX 3090. Woohoo! That's actually not too bad, I guess. And then we got uh, 83, 83C on the 3960X, which is a little too toasty for my liking. I did hook up a, a Noctua fan controller to the three fans on the radiator. I cranked it up to the max, which is actually running at max right now. And it's still really quiet, even at uh, full RPM. Thank you, Noctua, for, for making good fans. And that only really dropped our CPU temps by two degrees. So we were hitting 81C at the very hottest. It didn't really affect GPU temps much. We were still getting around 69C. And just for comparison, I actually decided to run the exact same render test on the wall-mounted PC, which again is a Ryzen 9 5950X, as well as a RTX, or I'm sorry, an RX 6900 XT from AMD. Uh, it is liquid cooled, so obviously temperatures were way better, but it rendered out the, the exact same project in three minutes and 10 seconds, which going from what, 235 to 310 doesn't seem like a lot, but that's actually a 23%, or I guess it took, it took the wall-mounted PC 23% longer to render out the same project. So if I'm ever rendering videos that are, let's say, 20 or even 30 minutes long, that really adds up uh, to a lot of minutes saved um, by using this, this system over here. So really happy, really impressed with uh, with the performance. I just need to fix the, uh, I just need to correct the thermals. The cold plate on the Celsius Plus is honestly a little small for uh, just how massive the IHS on Threadripper 3 is. So I might swap that out in the near future because I really want to bring those temperatures down and maybe even at some point, well, no, I'm not going to liquid cool. I'm not going to custom water cool it because that's what Chromethius is for. At some point I will fix freaking Chrometheus, and we will get this up and running and finally be able to do some testing on it, and that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. Chrometheus, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get you up and running, buddy, but I promise I'll get you booted one day, one day soon. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please toss a like on it before you go. It helps me a lot, and get subscribed for more tech content on the way. I will see you guys in the next video.